Last week, I had a raging fight with my flatmate, like a screaming match. And it was about a chocolate bar and a salad bowl. And I'm not the only one having problems. The resistance of oh, frustration okay. is lower. lower. We're hitting walls. In the long run, it's not a healthy way to coexist. I was lashing out on my uh, husband. I would like take it out on Cameron and we were kind of bickering a lot. Being cooped up together means that the potential for conflict is high, very high. You've probably heard about the divorce numbers spiking in China. Self-isolation can lead to challenging and in some cases extreme situations. So I talked to couples and families around the globe about how they are handling the situation. And I asked the couples therapist how to best cope with being boxed in with other people. Orna Goralnik is featured in a docu-series appropriately named Couples Therapy. One force that's ha happening right now is that we are confronted with differences. Like I see couples kind of falling into very kind of intense fights about difference and difference in coping style or uh, difference in view. I, I think respecting difference, respecting boundaries is key. So I'm advising people to um, really create very artificial boundaries and stick to them like dogmatically, like set a timer. If you need to be, if you can't literally be in separate, I'm sorry, hold on one second. Guys, that it's, for example, <laughs> someone intrudes, you say, not now. <laughs> Who was that your family or who was that? I was a family member and I, I, I told them, you cannot walk in. So you have to be really uh, rigid about it. And rules can be very simple, like what my friend Ellery does. We've had to set some boundaries and we have a rule that if one person has their headphones in, that means like, don't bother me for like simple things only if it's an emergency. It does not mean that if you, you know, your uh, husband is not spending time with you or your wife is not spending time with you, uh, they don't love you as much. It's just that everyone needs their space. That is, if you can get some. Space is luxury. I'm privileged because I live in a big apartment with my flatmates. But a lot of people all across the world don't have that luxury, meaning they have to be imaginative and create mental boundaries. If you are, for example, in a particular mood or you're struggling with a particular issue, it's very easy to call your partner in to play a role in your own internal drama. And now it's kind of prime time for those kind of dynamics. So the first week I um, felt very cooped up and was very restless and um, I would like take it out on Cameron and we were kind of bickering a lot because I felt super unhappy. To kind of listen to the music of that and not buy into your own story and kind of pull back from that and, and, and move into like the melody of like, we're in this together. I have tried to channel that in a more healthy way. So I've taken up a lot of hobbies. I realized I just need things to occupy my time. I was lashing out on my uh, husband. Uh, Thankfully, some sense prevailed and now there's a rhythm to everything that we are doing. But it is also true that during stressful times, underlying conflicts can boil over and turn violent. Domestic violence rates have gone up, not only in China, but also in Europe and elsewhere. Rachel Williams is a domestic abuse survivor herself and a women's rights campaigner in the UK. I can just put myself back living with a domestic terrorist because that's what they are. Um, you know, at, at least then, you know, I could get out and have some breathing space. But, you know, these victims and survivors now are, are in lockdown. So they are in a prison with a domestic terrorist. So things are going to be heightened um, to a massive magnitude. If you think perhaps your neighbor might be experiencing domestic abuse and violence next door, you know, perhaps go and knock the door, you know, with the, with the, 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 the two meter distancing, you know, and asking, is everything all right? To any victims and survivors watching this at the moment who need help, please make the call. You should be able to, to, to dial in and report something. Domestic abuse is everybody's business. Each country has different help hotlines and organizations, 
many of which are trying to ramp up their capacities during the crisis. If calling is too risky, you can also contact many of them digitally. But thankfully, this situation could also be a new opportunity for relationships. I think people also have the capacity to work through things that otherwise they wouldn't want to. It's a particular moment in time where we're not embedded in our everyday lives, so we have the capacity to think bigger and, and to understand things on a bigger scale. This is the reason why it's going great between us now, yeah. because we have time to talk more about stuff. So I think that this will be, this will help us uh, to understand uh, each other better. Yeah, I had, I had a situation where on day three of the quarantine with my flatmate, um, I got in a screaming match with him for the first time in my life. Of course. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Can I just predict with you what happened? Yeah, tell me. You probably had like a screaming match. You were each like shocked at the state you got into. And then you came out of it better than ever. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Did we, we came, we went back and then we said, sorry, that was an overreaction. Humanity is in a moment where it's being tested and it's our chance to show our best selves to each other. The option to go through something together is, is huge. Being able to see that rather than just take it for granted is profound. I think we've come closer as a family, spending so much time with our little one. I think I'm also realizing um, that I'm happy with my family. Like I'm happy that these are the people I'm quarantined with. I can't imagine being quarantined with anybody else. <laughs> so, so I'm glad we're in this together. Yeah, in this together. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the time. <laughs> Which questions do you have about your life with the corona crisis? Please let us know in the comments.